Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Uh, well, today I would like to tell you about relative homology. It's kind of a homology of X mod A, uh, where A is a subspace of X, not quite as we will see. Um, so basically you should think of it like, well, you have integers, in integers what you really like to do, or sometimes you really like to do is to just use modular arithmetic to say something about the integers themselves. It works surprisingly well, and the analog in homology is relative homology. That's what I'm going to explain today. So the idea is really that you can construct certain spaces from uh, taking quotients. So my favorite picture of this is the construction of the sphere uh, from the disk. So you can take the disk, uh, you con contract its boundary to a point, and you get a sphere. This is really this balloon picture of the sphere. So you have contracted the whole boundary of the sphere. Uh, to a point uh, of the disk to a point and now you have sphere which is hollow in the middle right you take a disk and you um just the balloon bit right the, the the disk itself is the surface of the balloon um and kind of in singular homology has associates homology to all of those three pieces we have homology for sn we have homology for sn minus one so homology here and homology here and of course we also have homology for a disk and I've just written down what they are. And the main question is, how are those related? In other words, how are taking quotient procedures, how are they reflected in homology? No doubt that the answer is not quite straightforward as you might would expect. Kind of the problem is that any, uh, you would expect it to be just maybe just um, homology of X modulo homology of A. So uh, homology of D2 modulo homology of S1, maybe that's, uh, homology of S, S squared, so the three dim two dimensional sphere, but that, that's just not going to work uh, because um, you kind of always kind of think of taking a contractible space and take a certain quotient and you get another space which is non-trivial anymore, but of course the contractible space has a trivial homology as here, my middle space, which later will be X and this middle space will be A. So that's kind of the problem, so it can't quite work, but there's still something you can say. And it's relative homology. So um, what I want to do is I want to look at the corresponding chain complexes for all those three. So here's my X, here's my A, and here's my X mod A. Um, and I look at the corresponding chain complexes. Let's say we do it in cellular homology. In cellular homology, I would just count. So I have one zero cell, and I have one zero cell everywhere. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so zero is here. So I have one zero cell. I have one zero cell everywhere. I have a, a one cell. I have a one cell. One cell. I have one cell. I don't have any one cells here. And I have a two cell. I don't have any two cells here. So no two cells. And I have a two cell here. So that's how this looks like. And the corresponding attaching maps. I've also written them down. So those are the three complexes. And then now the relative homology of which you should think as being the homology of, of uh, H mod A, X mod A, not quite. I will explain that later. It's not quite the homology, but it's anyway. So that you can think of it like this is a homology of uh, the quotient of the chain complexes. So what I take, what I do is I take um, uh, the big one. So this is a homology of uh, the chain complex associated to X. So let's take this one. I put it in the middle. A by definition sits inside here because it has the same cells but fewer of them. With A is a subspace, so A sits inside here, and I take the corresponding quotient. And if you look at this, uh, you have Z Z here, so you hit Z Z here. So in the quotient, they die, and the only thing that survives is the one in uh, degree two, so the the H two component. So that's the chain complex associated to it. And H is then the homology associated to the chain complex. Note that this is not really what we get here because we have the zero here in the zeros component. I will come back to that later. But this is really kind of generalizing this idea that in terms of algebra, in terms of linear algebra, you have a vector space, you have a subspace, you take the quotient and you have this nice uh, short exact sequence here. And you just do the same on topology for, not for the homology, for the homology, the statement gets a bit trickier. We will see that in a second, but for the chain complexes. And as I explained, we don't have this one and we, we don't want that. 
And we also have, don't have this one in general, but it, it's good enough that for us to think about that relative homology, the X comma A homology is actually the homology of X mod A. As I said, it's not quite true, but it's true enough. So really the picture I generalizing here is the middle one, uh, so the, the left one in the middle. So this idea of whenever you have a subspace, you can take the quotient. You just need to do it on the, home, on the chain groups, not on the homology. For the homology, the statement is a bit trickier. So what you need to do, what you need to know is what is a long exact sequence, what is an exact sequence. And this is just the following idea. You think of vector spaces, you can think of groups or any reasonable algebraic object. You have this kind of a sequence of maps and in each step, kernel equals image. So um, in this really nice illustration, which I stole is, uh, well, here's my space G0, it's the outside one, G0. And um, this little cone picture going all the way to here is the image of F0. So this is image of F0 because F0 maps G minus one somewhere into G0, right? By definition. And the kernel of this thing is now the gray cone going all the way to the next picture. And as you can see, kernel is equal to image. So that's what's called an exact sequence. So each step, kernel is equal to image. And this is this type of, I don't know how to call it picture, but it's this cone in a cone in a cone in a cone. So whenever you map a kernel maps to image, as you map, you see the image, which is a little disk. That little disk is the kernel of the next map. And for the next map, it's the same. Uh, so you have your, your image here is this little disk and the image is the uh, kernel of the next map. And so on, just everywhere. Kind of the, um, yeah, so that's a, exact sequence. And turns out that the right statement uh, is that you get an exact sequence. So it's not as easy as you would expect it to be. You just get an exact sequence. That's just that's just life. Anyway, so let's discuss the setup. So we have a topological pair. And a topological pair always means you have an X in the subspace A, particularly you have an inclusion of X into A. And the inclusion will turn up here on homology by just taking the induced map. And you also have those projections of um, uh, here and you have a corresponding uh, delta map, which is a funny map that goes from n to n minus one. Okay, and um, it just takes takes it's just a boundary map. It takes a relative cycle to its boundary. It's not hard. It's really just a boundary map. It just goes one down uh, from x comma a to a, and of course um, a. So the notation is here that a comma zero is just denoted by a. Right, so you just ignore the empty set. You can you can take a pair to, to have an X in the empty set, for example. So just ignore that. And it turns out that you get this exact sequence, which tells you how the various versions are related. I'll give you a, an explicit example in a second. And in a lot of cases, actually, you you could think of relative homology as being um, the relative homology. Not quite, you have this ambiguity in the zero space that we also already have seen here. So this has a thing in, in zero uh, in the zero homology and this doesn't. Uh, so you get rid of this by writing a tilt everywhere and it's just, uh, this is rid of this, well, it's almost true. So you get rid of it by just writing in a tilt and you call this thing with reduced homology, you just set the zero homology to zero because it's, it, it's there anyway. For, for any connected space, it will be there anyway. That's the relationship. So almost always, or well, let's say, uh, you can easily just think of the relative homology uh, being just the homology of X mod A, and the relation between them is encapturated in this uh, exact sequence. That's that's what just what homology gives us. It's not a super straightforward relationship, but it's it's not so bad. So let's have a look at an example. Of course, my example from before was S two and uh, D two modulo S one. So what you do is you just write them down. So H2, S1, H2, D2, so H2, A, H2, X, and then H2 of the quotient. In this case, really, uh, this one is just H2 of, of S2, so of the quotient. Uh, so I explained it here below. So in almost all cases, you can just think of the relative homology as being the homology of the quotient. Anyway, and then comes a boundary map and you go one down and you repeat everything. And then comes a boundary map, you go one down and you repeat the same thing. This is how it looks like. And it tells you it's exact. So in each step, kernel is image. 
and if you feed in the corresponding algebraic data here, you can actually see uh, explicitly that this is true. Um, the point, of course, is then that you want to use this exact sequence to compute things. In this case, I already know homologies. I just filled them in to double check whether I haven't screwed up my, uh, my conventions here. And this is really exact. So in this case, for example, uh, the kernel as an image is zero and the kernel is zero, very good. So in, in this case, um, the image is zero and the kernel is zero because this is an isomorphism. In this case, the image is everything and the kernel is everything because you have zero map here and so on. Uh, anyway, so relative homology is this idea of modding out certain things and it is very powerful uh, in the sense that you get this nice or relatively nice uh, long exact sequence in homology, which helps you to compute various versions of relative homology. So relative homology, if you want, you can just think of it as a homology of X mod A, which can't quite be straightforward because you kind of always can take uh, for any space X mod A, you can kind of find an X which is contractible, which could collapse the whole thing if you would take HX modulo AX. So it's a bit more complicated than that, but you end up with this uh, nice long exact sequence. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.